Looking good, Rick. Yeah, so I've raised up in the world. You have, you've gone up in the world, mate. <laughs> We're now doing the windows above the uh, the cellar, which we did this morning. Yep. They look fantastic, Rick. Should we get these all done today? Absolutely, it'd be fantastic to see them with a lick of paint. Yeah, they're, uh, they're not as bad as the ones on the uh, the side, are they, on the terrace? No. Because uh, they've um, been a little bit hidden by the weather, but uh, yeah. good lick of paint, I'll uh, bring them up again. Fantastic, mate, appreciate your help. You're always welcome. <laughs> Plus I'm getting the tan while I'm here, because it's lovely today over it is. in France. Really nice. At least you got the good weather today, Michael. Oh, praise the Lord. You might you might get a suntan if you take your top off. Take me top and off. I might get some views. <laughs> no, you might lose some subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> um so what are you doing? You're taping up again. You did you did that area yesterday. I did that yesterday. Can you believe just this area here? Mm -hmm. it took me six hours. Six hours. That's not too and, bad. And I noticed I have been reading the comments, and a lot of people keep saying, "Use a piping bag." Well, I I have I haven't used a piping bag, but what I have done is I've used a different technique where you put it onto the thing and scrape it in. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's bad because what happens is you get too much in it goes right to the bottom mm -hmm. and you think that was a good idea yeah but what happens is um it has no give so that when you actually go to to smooth it out and put the sand in it it kind of bulges up like yeah. that mm -hmm. um and it raises up and it looks really untidy so what i do is i put it in and i leave probably a bit of a gap underneath mm -hmm. and that it that way it has a little bit of room just to settle in yeah. And it ends up nice and flush. Mm -hmm. And you can see here it's very neat. But I here I was putting too much in. I couldn't imagine putting that epoxy into a piping bag, the amount of mess that would create. It's, it's like the consistency, I'd say it's like warm peanut butter. Yeah, but it would stick to any everything. It's really sticky. The thing is, it, you don't have long to work with it. So I think by the time I'd actually got it into the piping bag mm -hmm. and... and um, it would start to go off and it wouldn't actually be soft enough to then, because it does after about an hour, it goes a, f a, lot, a lot firmer. And actually at that stage, it's much easier to work with. Yeah. So unfortunately, um, I'm going to have to do it with a trap. But actually putting the stuff in is so quick. Yeah. What takes the time is scraping out all the dust and the dirt, putting the primer in, vacuuming it. And once you've vacuumed it, you have to go back and vacuum it again. And then mm -hmm. you, have to, you usually have to vacuum each bit three times just to get every bit of dust out. Um, so actually putting the stuff in is quick. Yeah. What takes the time is the prep. Yeah. And I'm on my own, which I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mad about. I'm, I'm quite actually, I quite like doing this on my own because well, I know. Well, you're responsible for the. I know everything's been done prepped properly. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. because if someone else does it and they miss something, you've got a point of failure then. Yeah. So, so I'm just going to keep going at my own pace. No problem. Just keep cracking on. Yep. I'm quite enjoying it actually. That's good. I just need a uh, constant supply of materials. Yeah. So that's your job. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my last roll of tape. Oh no. I need more. I've got Ambrico later. It's really later. good quality tape, but the thing is, I've tried using other duct tape before and it doesn't stick to the stone. Mm -hmm. This is really sticky and it's got like a silicon coat on it so that the stuff doesn't stick to it. You can see it's like really yeah. smooth. Yeah. So the grout doesn't stick to it, it actually goes in. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's about 11 euros or 12 dollars ish. Well, we knew it wasn't going to be an expensive job, but anyway, I'll let you crack on. Yeah. Yeah, doing a good job. Yeah. Thank you. 
So I've added a painting of a ship and a nice mirror. Also, I found this Bonheur du Jour or a writing desk, which is really nice. The chair needs a bit of a clean, but this is the chandelier which is going in the room. I've already rewired it, cleaned all of the brass or bronze. I've cleaned all of the glass or crystals, and that's why they were in that box. So they all need adding back. I've already done half the top one, but as soon as that's done, I can hang it. Like I said, the wiring's already done. I put the hooks at the same height so they could be swapped, those paintings and mirror. This is quite an interesting paint, painting. The artist is Dan Court, or Dan Court. Um, and he was a painter who focused the majority of his work on naval scenes or ships. And this is a ship in distress. I don't know where, but um, he's quite a famous artist and his artwork goes for quite a lot of money. But I managed to get this painting quite cheap because the frame was completely busted. I don't know if you can see that joint here. There's also a joint here, but I took a molding of the original and replaced all of these because they're all missing. This corner here is original. You can see that line there. And then this is the um, repairs that I did. And it certainly tidied it up a bit, not like a professional wood, but close enough. So the only thing this room needs now is a wardrobe, a carpet, and a bed, and some bedside, bedside cabinets and lamps. And obviously some curtains as well. But other than that, that room should be done quite soon. I've just got to do the metal hardware for the windows and the doors, strip the paint off them and polish them up. And yeah, I certainly didn't think this room would look this good. I think it's the really nice warm colors that Gwen and Michael chose, because I normally go quite bold, which makes the rooms quite dark. But I really like the colors. And then we'll be on to the next bedroom. But in the meantime, for the ensuite, just go a bit closer. I have the plumber, Clive, coming soon, and he's gonna do the services because below this room, um, we have the toilet uh, drain and the hot and the cold water to come up and then go up again into the next ensuite above and um, as soon as those services are in, I can start doing the room. It shouldn't be that bad. Just a lot of um, tidying up and things. But yeah, this room is looking fantastic. Absolutely love it. So we're in the kitchen, Michael. We are. It will be the kitchen. And um, I paced it out this morning yeah. just to see how big it was. And surprisingly, this one room is as big as the kitchen at the convent. It is, but it looks smaller because it's dark and dingy and the ceilings are a bit lower. A lot lower, a probably lot lower. by a meter and a half, maybe. Yeah. maybe but more. This, this room alone is over 800 square feet. 75 square meters, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. But this one room, don't forget you've also got the scullery so and the pantry. And the pantry yeah. So it's actually bigger. It's huge. It is huge, yeah. Yeah. But, the convent's probably three times as big as the chateau though. It is, yeah. But the chateau looks a lot nicer. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot less work to do at the chateau than there is at the convent, so. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the trade-off. And, and yeah, well we just, I think it will really transform it because obviously we're talking about it, it's got to be sandblasted and that will be all the metal work. You see all this iron, yeah. cast iron columns. You can see there's a seam down there. Yeah. I wonder if they were cast in two halves or that, no, they would have just cast a solid piece, wouldn't they? Not Unless sure. They're not hollow, they're solid. They are and solid, yeah. And, um, 
They were just painted with some old lime wash by the looks. They are a bit chalky. Oh look, it's red underneath. Maybe red oxide. Yeah, the what, lead. <laughs> what are you going to um, paint them with? I don't know. I don't think white. I quite like the idea of a um, a sort of cast irony colour, like a graphite paint, like a grey. That'd be nice. A grey. Maybe not too dark though. No, not dark. Like just a nice, like a gunmetal grey or something. Like, like the colour of this camera. Yeah. And, yeah. No, maybe lighter than that. Okay. And um, the one thing I have noticed, I haven't really noticed before, is the useful glaze skirting tiles, what you call them, like um, baseboard. Baseboard. They're tiles, but they're like ceramic glazed ones. They're actually sort of ready brown, they're beautiful. So they have to be protected while the guy uh, Martin's down here sandblasting because it will. Well, I reckon it's gonna take him two days. Two days for the, for the beams at the convent yeah. and the fireplace. So I reckon it's gonna probably mm -hmm. take as long. We just need to get some tiles made, which is gonna be, uh, I mean, I could cast them with epoxy or something like that, but they wouldn't look the same. They'd have to, I think, well, I have to find something. We else. had a, a lot of comments saying, why don't you take the tiles from behind the units you're putting in? If I try and take that out with a hammer and chisel, it will just smash. Yeah, but if they're you... They're so fragile. I know they're fragile, but... They won't come off. No. Because look how they're glued behind. Well, they got the very strong DC, we've yeah. Had, we've got some that we found that were, mm -hmm. they were on the floor. They, were, they dropped off and we've collected them up. Yeah. And, then, and they just break so easily. Yeah. So they'll just... And the thing is, I, that is a good idea, but I also think in the future, for any reason, if somebody takes out the kitchen cabinets, then they're gonna have exactly the same problem. Yeah. And I always like to think of the future, not just us. Like, you know, we wanna preserve this building as an example of architecture from its period for, for future. Though the building's only 120 years old, in another 100 years, it was gonna be 220 years old. And yeah. if we can keep it, as an example of, of, of the time, it would yeah. be nice to mm -hmm. preserve it. So yeah. That's why I want to keep the kitchen quite traditional. Um, should we show everyone the new oak windows? Oh, yes. Because we haven't shown them yet. Well, should I just get one and bring it in? Yeah, get one and bring it in, yeah. I need one of the big ones. So these are, well, this is one of... This is one of the oak windows. So obviously that's the outside. Yeah. These are, we have actually got the glass. They're double glazed, yep. which will keep it nice and warm down here. Um, and if you can see, they've got beautiful brass hardware on them. Mm -hmm. So you would pull, you'd have a stick with a hook on it. Yep. And then that would pull. And that opens. And it just opens like that. So they open inwards. Yeah. That's and fantastic. Pretty, pretty easy to open and close. That one closed. It was closed. <laughs> there we go, it's closed. Okay. So let's, this is number four. So I'm assuming it's from this window. Yeah. Okay. It should fit. I don't know, probably because it's got the old mortar in there, Maybe. but try. Okay, it will fit if you take the bottom mortar off. So that, that, that's the window. Yeah. Imagine it's actually recessed in. It's got a, a fillet of uh, concrete underneath, Michael, so it yeah, won't yeah, fit. It from going in. Yeah. But they're a good fit, actually. But Paddy measured them perfectly. He came back twice to measure them. I remember. That one's a bit loose. Doesn't shut. <laughs> yeah, shut. Fantastic. So that'd be nice once it's installed. Yeah. I think the inside will leave it an oak finish. Just varnished. A hundred percent oak on the inside, yeah. And the outside will be the same paint that Rick's using at the moment, that nice. It's like a pearl colour. It's a uh, lime white. Thing, lime white, it? yeah. So we'll paint the outsides. Okay. And then we'll have to get rid of this gravel because it's backing up against the window. Uh, it's a bit of iron come off. So yeah, that's the window. And we've got all of them. They're all, they're all been made. Yep. All they just need a, a little sand off. Clean and uh, painting and painting, finishing. but I think oak on the inside look lovely, really nice with the gold yeah. hardware. Fantastic. Well, thanks for showing us, Michael. Yeah, always a pleasure. I don't think they've been fixed properly yet. No, I think they're not. Actually. I think Paddy put them on just for sh like to show me for how sure it worked. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Lovely. There you go.